Hey folks, DIY Dan here. Today we're going to continue with the saga of the Saturn. So we've narrowed down the problem to it being the fuel pump. Um, actually, after we fixed the crankshaft position sensor, uh, the car ran great for a couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden uh, it died on us. Uh, it would die on us randomly and then suddenly start back. Uh, and then around um, St. Patrick's Day this year, which I think was March 17th, 2024, uh, drove it over t to pick up a relative and it wouldn't start in their parking lot so of their apartment complex. So it sat there until I was able to diagnose it um, to uh, the fuel pump. So went out got a fuel pump, uh, put the fuel pump in, and the new one didn't work ironically so I just got the warranted replacement uh, fuel pump so now I'm gonna replace the fuel pump second time replacing the fuel pump third time dropping the gas tank because that's what's required now there's videos out there where you cut an access hole uh, in the underneath the back seat I didn't want to do that because I was worried about getting a good seal to keep gas fumes from the passenger compartment so I'm just gonna do it the right way and uh, this is the third time I'm dropping it because I dropped it the second time the fuel pump tank that is to make sure I didn't have any lines kinked and I didn't and it just turned out to be the fuel pump it was running but it wasn't pumping anything so I'm hoping that the replacement for the replacement is gonna work this time we'll find out so for those of you who don't know this is a fuel pump and this particular type for my 99 Saturn SL2 sits in the gas tank uh, on top of the gas tank which is why we have to drop it in order to get to it so the fuel goes in in there it's this is what tells you your gas gauge how much fuel you have uh, and uh, it pumps up through this line here through your filter and then all the way up into your engine and then there's also a return line which is right here uh, which brings it back any fuel that's not used in the combustion process and then there's a vent line here also so don't quite know what's wrong it's going uh, this is actually the old the original the OG uh, OEM uh, fuel pump so when I pull out the new one you'll see there's a slight difference color difference uh, the, the float is a little bit different but um, those are really just cosmetic issues the the main guts of it are all the same so let's take a look at what we're going to require what tools we're going to require okay so these are the tools we're going to need some of them I, I've tried to be comprehensive with this but uh, we'll see if I if I need more I'll, I'll point it out but um, I can use rubber gloves uh, I normally, you guys watch my, any of my videos, you normally see I have those yellow ones with the grippy things on the other side. But because we're dealing with fuel, you need some kind of rubber, whatever, latex or non-latex if you're allergic to that nitrite gloves. Uh, a big screwdriver and a little screwdriver, uh, a ratchet. I've got an electric ratchet, which I pretty much use most of the time, but if you don't have one, a regular one will work. A couple of extensions. Um, a short extension, long extension, sometimes you might need to combine them. This is mainly to get to the strap bolts. Uh, a 10 millimeter socket, a 15 millimeter, which is going to be for the strap bolts. Uh, some kind of knuckling uh, socket holder, or uh, actually for, for this particular make and model, uh, a wobble uh, socket would be enough. You don't need quite this much articulation in your uh, socket but that's I don't have one so that's all I got a light uh, a chisel and a hammer that's to uh, you'll see later to open up to take the um, what you call it the fastening ring off the top of this you'll see that once the tank comes down pair of pliers and then also some kind of angled pliers uh, these last few are not required. You can get by without them, but I, I have them, so I use them. Uh, and then these are hose gripper pliers, just three different sizes. I usually just use these two. 
and ironically mainly I use them more to pinch the connectors to get these uh, fuel lines off than actually pulling hoses. This hose, this car is very old, it's a 99. So a lot of the hoses are older so you got to be careful. You'll see under there if I can get shots. Again I'm going to try my best, it's difficult because I'm going to have to be under the car. Um, that some of that's this stuff I'm not the original owner I've only owned this car for about six months seven months something like that maybe maybe a little less than a year so there's some things that were jerry-rigged to work and so I try not to touch those uh, and find alternate way of disconnecting uh, a couple of things down there but other than that it should be pretty straightforward it's just a matter of uh, it takes a little time difficulty I put it in intermediate if you're not comfortable working with a full fuel tank or a fuel tank or a fuel system have a mechanic uh, do a qualified mechanic uh, I don't want you to work on anything that's outside your depth as I said this will be my third time doing it so I'm pretty confident uh, just so you know the gas tank is half full so um, I would recommend that if you are uh, got a full tank of gas and you have a way of emptying it into a safe container for reuse, uh, I would do that first. I don't have a way of emptying it um, into anything. I mean, I've got gas cans for my lawnmower, but uh, I have no way of getting the gas out. I'm not, I don't have a siphoner or anything like that. I'm certainly not doing it the old school way of a hose and sucking on it. Uh, so. Uh, I'm just going to use, I forgot I have a jack, and the jack's going to be, uh, I'm not going to show it on camera, but I'm going to jack the car up and put it on ramps so that I don't have to have it on jack stands. That's just a personal preference for me. Anytime I'm going to work underneath the car and I can get away and I'm not working with the, the wheels or anything, the brakes or this, anything that requires that, I like putting it on ramps. To me, it's just more secure. Uh, that way and I feel more comfortable with it on ramps. You do you. Uh, I've also got wheel chucks up front and I'll show you what it all looks like once I get it done. There's no sense in showing down the camera. I'm just going to jack it up and put it, put the, the ramps underneath it. Um, Alright, so we'll come back when that's done and I'll uh, show you what, what, what we're working with. Alright, we're all set. So let's get started and we'll start by me showing you how I've got the car set up. So as you can see it's up on ramps and again obviously if the car runs you can just drive it up on the ramps uh, but I had to jack it up and I've got both front wheels chalk so safety third in this case safety first folks make sure your car is nice and stable before you work underneath it and there's some jack and so let me take you under there and put on the safety glasses you'll just have to trust me so what we're doing my lights running away so you can see so this is the filler neck it goes down and goes into the gas tank right there right there to the left that silver thing is strap a strap see that's the 15 millimeter bolt on the other side Right there you'll see the other strap. Now there's also power going to this. Sorry my glasses have fogged up so I can't see that well. You'll see that the tank is plastic and that there's also a guard. Those are all connected. Those will come down and then if you're you'll see we'll take it out. Well, there's the fuel filter and the lines. Those lines going into the filter in other words away from us towards the front of the car are the lines that are connected directly to the fuel pump. And they 
Those are brake lines. Don't look at those. And the fuel pump lives up there, which you can't even see from here. This is the modification that I was telling you about. This is a vent hose. So in order to not cut all those uh, zip ties, we're going to disconnect it right here where it comes out and it'll all come out. The fuel tank will actually have to go forward and then out. So let me get all set up and I'll show you our first steps. Okay, this is the fuel filter. These are the lines coming to the fuel filter from the pump. And then on the other side, they go out to the car or to the engine and the fuel rail. First step is I'm going to disconnect everything I can disconnect um, from under here. There's also a vent tube over here, which I'm going to disconnect. It's just pushing these two. I don't know. Let me make sure you can see those where my hand is. Okay, yes. There's two little blue tabs, and in my case, they're blue. You push them together and you just pull the connection off. So it's a little awkward on this side. This is on the driver's side, by the way, right near the rear wheel. There we go. All right, so that's disconnected because this pipe is gonna, you gotta take it out of the little hanger because it's, it's gonna come down with the tank and you don't wanna stretch this side of it. You do not need to disconnect this side of the fuel filter because you're not taking the fuel, unless you're taking the whole fuel filter off. And I would suggest if you're uh, doing this and you've never changed this fuel filter, then go ahead and get a new fuel filter and change the fuel filter. In that case, you will have to disconnect this and then disconnect it from here, the bracket from here to take it out completely. I already changed this fuel filter, so I don't need to disconnect all that. That's a good time for these pliers. There's two little tabs, one on either side. You can use your fingers, but sometimes these this pipe, these hose clamp pliers are a little easier. You just depress them in, and they should pull out. I don't always like to cooperate, especially when you have big hands like mine. Not a brag, just a fact. <clears throat> so. We'll sit here and mess with this and get these out. If you're having a hard time, that's good. That means they won't come off easy. Just be careful because you can damage these connections. Uh, but if you're replacing this anyway, it's not that big a deal. There we go. Now another tip is I already knew there was no fuel in this system because I've, as I told you before, I replaced it. But if you're doing this for the first time and you haven't released the fuel pressure, you're gonna get fuel coming out of here. So you should have a catch pan down here to catch that fuel uh, uh, so that it doesn't get all over the driveway or wherever you're working. As I said, I knew there was not gonna be any fuel because the pump's not working and this is the second, third time I've done this. And see, even then, a little bit of fuel dropped, dripped out, which is actually kind of surprising. Uh, oh, let me uh, let me get a can. I'll get a catch can for that. Just make sure you take it out of this. There's a little clamp here too. Take all these pipes out of these clamps here, because again, you're going to drop this down in a minute. All right, that's everything over here that needs to be disconnected. Let's move on to. Uh, underneath again. All right, I don't know if you can see it. There we go. That's our next objective. That's the fuel neck going into the fuel tank. It's just a worm uh, clamp. It's an eight millimeter if you want to use a socket or uh, I can't see it from where I am, but if it's a Phillips head, you can do it that way. I'm gonna use a socket because it's faster with an extension. So we'll get that taken care of real quick. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't, I apologize. And I'll edit it out. But I have to see what I'm doing, so. Here we 
get the right angle, that would help. There we go. Oh, and it's not a Phillips, it's a, uh, it's a flathead. All right, my uh, initial assessment was wrong. So forgive me. It's not a seven. Well, it might be a seven, but I don't have a seven. Uh, however, it is a nine thirty seconds. So uh, I have a small uh, quarter inch set, and that's what I'm using on an adapter to uh, get this off. So I'm going to try to do this somehow so you can see it you guys can't see anything all right just assume that I got it off so we'll come back when I got it off all right folks. so I got the, the worm thing loose we're not gonna pull it loose yet that throat uh, still neck uh, but it's loose next normally you would disconnect this from here but since again that's all jerry-rigged we're gonna do it from here and it's just a pair of pliers. I'm gonna squeeze the clamp there, and then I've taken this out. But look how look at the condition of that hose. So here, let me turn this light down a little bit. Maybe you'll be able to see better. Um, so that is last thing I need to do is replace that. So let me get my pliers, and we'll get going on that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to do this without my camera falling. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> or my light falling for that matter. There should, this is just in the vent hose, so there's no fuel in this. In this hose, so just do the clamp. Push it back. You gotta push it back over that uh, little hump in the tube that keeps it in there. So it way up there that should be more than enough if you've never taken off this clamp before or you're worried it's going to be stuck to that hose you can spray it with some penetrating oil uh, you can take a small screwdriver if it's really super not flexible I wouldn't even do that uh, but this is and like I said I've taken it off twice before so it should come right off, which it is. There we go. That's all you need to do. And uh, we can leave that for now. We will at some point. Uh, it's in this clamp here. We're going to undo this bolt, which I believe is going to be a 10. Um, as a matter of fact, I guess we can just do it now. Uh, and that... We'll drop that whole thing down. And let me find my tin. Millimeter sock it. No, I swear I didn't lose it. I know it's the most lost socket in the world. But I did not lose mine this time anyway. I've actually got two just in case. Uh, we have a mishap here. Alright, so we'll just get this undone real quick this will this is also holding the fill neck so all right there we go so now this is all going to be loose i know it doesn't look loose now but once we pull the fuel filler neck off the tank now I'm going to disconnect this from here because this will have to come down with a tank where the filler neck will not have to come down with a tank. So and I'm going to leave this bolt over here by the ramp so I don't forget it. Alright, let's move on to the next step. Alright folks, here comes the fun part. So as you can see, I have my jack is just on the so fuel tank. You'll see it's forward it's actually uh, deeper on this side than it is on that side so this is okay again I got half about half a tank of gas in here so um, hey no smoking that's right I forgot to tell you that no smoking when doing this okay guys leave the leave the sig brakes way over there somewhere so it's right up to this heat shield uh, so once we drop the straps we'll be able to move 
the jack a little farther more centered but you're not going to be able to get this fuel neck off until you start lowering the fuel tank. This is solid. It's not rubber per se. It's plastic. So there's no flex to this. So you're going to have to drop the tank down a little bit, little bit and then start yanking this off. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we get started. But So this is the point where if you have a full tank, you're going to make a mess. Because the fuel is going to come out of where the hose, the fuel filler neck goes into the tank. Uh, so just be prepared for that. I don't know how you can get a catch can under there, but uh, I'll figure that out, get a buddy. But mine should at, have minimal spillage. If, if not, if we do it the right way, we won't have any spillage. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our extension, our wobble, and our 15, and we're gonna drop this, uh, first one all right there we go hopefully it won't jump off all right so trap one bolt I'll put it over here so I don't lose it see you now the strap is a little caught up here. That's fine. They're flexible. Just gonna bend it around. There we go. Alright. It even completely separated from the pan. Yours may not do that. Mine did because I've disconnected it twice. So let's go see if I can set you up for the other side and uh, go from there so you can see the other side. It's the same as this side though, but just remember once you do that strap, it's going to be sitting on the wall. The way it's going to be sitting on the um, the jack. Alright folks, that's about the best angle I can get you on this side. This is the passenger side <laughs> strap. Remember, make sure your jack is set because this is going to all the weight's going to come down onto the jack at this point because this strap, this bolt is the only thing holding this tank up. And you guys are right where I need my hand. So you've got it off. You just gotta get the, the bolt recovered. Just gotta get the strap down. As you can see, the heat shield is dropped down too. You could push your jack a little bit farther. That makes you feel more comfortable. There we go. There we are. All right. So now you've got the trick of getting these clamps out. Let's go take a look how much fun that's gonna be. Okay, so here's the strap. We're on the passenger side in front of the rear wheel. So it just hangs in that. Lift it up, pull it out, and then move it back. Out from underneath the tank. And then we can do the same with the heat shield. Which we can attach back later. And then we just have to 
that one requires a little more finagling and I'll show it to you what we mean. Okay, as you can see with this one, it requires being able to do a caddy corner to get it out. So that's lots of practice. Trust me, it's not normally that easy. Now we gotta disconnect the filler tank and that's where the fun begins. Alright, I'm gonna leave you guys here so you can kind of watch the process. The filler neck is right there. I'm gonna start lowering this because it's the angle that you need to get. Now you can't let this drop all the way because there are electrical connections uh, to the fuel pump that have to be disconnected. Those will be the last things you disconnect before you can completely, before the tank will be completely free to drop all the way down. So keep that in mind. Filler neck, you, what you're gonna have to do is kinda, the tank is like this, you're gonna have to kinda drop it so that it angles down so that this side where the filler neck is comes up and then you can make, push it out a little bit so you have enough slack to pull that tank uh, or that uh, filler neck off. Again, remember it's not flexible. So let's give it a try. See what we get. Okay. So I'm gonna drop it down a little bit. I'll, I'll try to narrate the best I can. As you saw earlier, I moved the jack a little farther forward once the heat shield was out of the way. So you wanna do this slow. Just remember, you, all right, now see the filler neck moved. You may not have seen that, but it did. So now you remember, you've gotta hold it, the fuel tank like this, cause you're pulling. You don't wanna pull it off the jack. So you start wiggling it. Again, you can hit it with some penetrating oil, but this is actually, you can't see. There we go, okay. It is loose from the tank. However, there is also uh, a uh, device in the filler neck. I'm not sure if it's a pre-filter. It's probably a combination of a pre-filter and an also an anti-siphoning thing. I'm not sure. But it's not free from the filler neck yet. It's over the hump. So now we're going to loosen it or drop it down a little more ever so slightly and I'm doing this by well if you don't know how to lower a jack that's a different video I'm going down very slow now I'm gonna stop and you have to do a couple of things at this point you can move the fuel tank back a little well nope yeah it's going back a little bit you need to get that piece free and if you need to jack it back up in order to do that which I do do that to get that piece out of the throat it should push back into the fuel neck a little ways just to get it free from the fuel tank you drop it back down a little bit there we go. That's what I need. I need a little, little more angle. So I pulled it back towards me a little bit, the, the jack, so that it angles this aperture up. And now I need to drop it down just a tad. Uh, again, this is why you wear safety glasses, because anytime you mess around under here, stuff's going to fall in your eyes. All right. I still can't get it to come out of that hole yet. Let's, let me move on. Remember this tube you disconnected, this vent tube? It's got to come out and around at some point too. So keep that in mind. We don't have it far enough out yet. Let me drop it down a little more. And this is something where a little goes a long way. All right, I was able to push it forward a little bit as it dropped down. I should be able to get that. Remember, you've got that worm clamp on here. Keep that on the filler neck so you don't lose it. Come on, get out of there. Let me push this with my feet, foot forward a little bit. Oh, just not missing it. Oh, let me lower it just a little more. It's like right there. Alright, let's 
see if that worked. All right, it's it's out. Okay, I know you probably can't see any of that, but you're just going to have to trust me. So now, you need to put this hose in a position where when it starts to drop, you can angle it out of there. It's not quite at that point yet. Last thing you want to do, see now if you were able to disconnect it from this side, you wouldn't be having this problem, but since I can't, I have to account for that on top of everything else. So now we can lower it down more. Please go slow, because remember we still have the electrical connections. But this is really good, I should be able to get my hand in there. And I'll show you which electrical connections once I get the tank out. Oh, see, now you got to be careful, because this thing's very loose and ready to go. Alright, I got that. Vent tube is a pain in the butt for me. So hopefully you won't have to deal with this like I am, but there we go. That's what I needed. Now I'm going to pull the tank back onto the jack thumb and because I loosened the clips, and I'll show you those clips in a minute, I can probably drop this the rest of the way down, or not the rest of the way, but a good bit more down so I can get my hand in there. Uh, that's good. Now you want to make sure you keep it. Just connect the electrical next, which is just tabs. I'll show you those in a minute also. There's two. One goes to the pressure, fuel pressure regulator sensor, and the other one goes to the fuel pump. Boom. See, now both those are disconnected. It's just one of these tabs, things you lift on the top. I'll show you again in a minute. Now the fuel tank is completely disconnected. Uh, it can be dropped down the rest of the way and then you can pull it out because that's the only way you're going to get to the fuel uh, pump is by pulling it completely out from underneath the car. So let me see here. All right, that's my jack is all the way down. So now you see I have a clearance issue, but I'm just gonna slide it down my jack a little farther. Okay, yep, it's down all the way, so. Alright, now that I've cleared the rear suspension, I can pull it back farther up onto the jack and just roll it, use the jack to roll it out. And while we're here, before I go to the next step again here's the connectors see they just oh my god turn this way you can see it see it better you just lift this up and they pull right out they're both this, this connector is the same um, you cannot however put these in the wrong place because they're two completely different connectors so don't worry about that. The only see one's a three, one's a four. So if uh, here's a pro tip from an amateur. Where is it? Oh, you see that clip right there? That metal, that plastic clip, right there. If you undo the that one, and there's one uh, back here. There's another one right there. That will make putting it back in so much easier. Trust me. Don't ask me how I know. All right, let's let's get to changing this fuel pump out. Okay, before we get started, let me just show you what we're looking at. So here's the tank. So see how it's deeper on this side than it is on this side. So that's why I was saying you got to be able to clear your suspension with this. 
even I think the first time I did it I just let it sli slide all the way on the ground because it's only half full it's not that difficult to slide but try to minimize that because again it's made out of plastic apparently the manufacturer includes a little handle here in case you ever need it but this is what we're after this is the fuel pump and then as you see it was plugged in here and this is the fuel pressure fuel tank pressure regulator or sensor not a regulator a sensor and that was the other plug the rest of this is emissions this is a I forget what they call it but it's like a charcoal canister I think this is probably the, the regulator here I'm not certain don't take my word for it I'm sure there's somebody that knows more that can uh, comment on that and this is again the zip tie magic otherwise you could have just disconnected it from here and it not been a problem I wasn't gonna mess with that because I don't have the zip ties all right, let me get you guys set up and we'll get this new old fuel pump out and put the new, new fuel pump in. Okay, so now what we need is the chisel or a screwdriver if you don't have a chisel. Chisel works better, believe it or not. And a hammer. So what we need to do is this is the locking ring. We just need to hammer it counterclockwise that way to the left, remember lefty Lucy, to release it. So you can actually just hit it anywhere. on the ground you won't have this problem with it moving but since I have it on my jack uh, it may be tough the first time you do it again this is the third time I've done it but if you notice it's sprung up that's because it's spring loaded and I'll show you what I mean so the only other thing is to disconnect it here from this regulator here well, that's your third line uh, your center line is your fuel outline, so you need to remember that. But again, with this uh, fuel filter, there's only one way you can connect those lines because there's a small connection and a large connection, and then the hoses are small and large. Again, we just push these two in. Now this is free to go. I'll take this out. And then just lift it straight up. Remember it's full of fuel. So I'm letting it drain, but you've also got the float, so don't forget about the float. So you can't pull it straight out. You've got to make space for the float there. And it's, it's still draining fuel, so. Again, you're not going to avoid spillage. There we go. That's the new old one. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the uh, new one. Okay folks, so first thing we're going to do is clean this hole a little bit and we'll take this new old o-ring off because I'm just going to use the one that came with the new one just make sure there's no as much dirt you want to do it away from the tank so that you're not getting dirt in the tank how much you decide to clean this is up to you the main thing is try not to get dirt into the tank. Now, chances are your filter will get it, but if the chunk is too large, you will clog the filter, the pre-filter, which I'll show you in just a second, and you'll be right back where you started from, 
having to drop this tank again. So this is how your fuel filter will come when it's new. This one is a TRQ. It's not an endorsement, especially since I have had to have them warranty this one. Now, in all fairness to them, they were very helpful and sent this out right away after I showed proof of purchase and I probably got it less than a week. So I don't know, I don't hold anybody at fault the first time uh, because, you know, sometimes stuff happens. I don't know nothing about this brand, so that's why I'm telling you it's not a sponsor. It's just one that I picked up uh, for this car. We don't plan on keeping this car forever, so I wasn't going to spend a ton of money on a super high performance fuel filter. But there you go. There's their thing, and I'll show you the box in a minute. But this is the pre-filter right here. So this sits in the tank. What I was talking about before, and this is again your how you tell how much fuel is in your car. It's spring loaded, so what I mean is when you put it in the tank, it's obviously going to be taller than the tank, but it springs down. So that's how you get the tight seal. So, and they come blocked off so you don't get dirt in them. So let's put it in. Again, float in first, tilt it that way, and then you should be able to get the fuel pump in there. Now make sure these lines are not kinked. So before I even do that, see I'm about to do it the wrong way. Let's get the new O-ring on there, otherwise we really will have been wasting our time. And I would have had to do this for the fourth time. Alright. Do it right the first time, DIY Dan. Okay, so now this O-ring just goes in the groove that's here on the top. Just make sure it's not being pinched when you drop the fuel tank down or fuel pump down on it. Hold off on making this connection until we get it down. So now we need to on the retaining ring because you're going to have to push down on the fuel pump as you're and it's starting it and I put it on the wrong way. Okay. This is the top of the fuel tank ring so make sure you put it on the correct way. So it just goes in here, line this up like this, make sure the fuel pump is going down straight. And see we just push it down start the ring that's all you need to do is get just to get it started make sure that the fuel pump is oriented the right way and once you get it started grab your hammer and you want to I just like to get it started a little more and get my chisel Keep going with it. Alright, there we go. It doesn't, as you see, it doesn't go all the way just till it, these hit the tip right there. That is in. If you have a friend, sometimes it's easier. So now, enhance. Sorry, I stole that from South Main Auto. I'm gonna connect this vent line right here. So I just remove the plastic. And it should snap right off. There's the click. All right. These are the lines you want to leave on top and leave the caps in because when we put the tank back in we'll have to pull them down but they'll drag on the ground if you uh, put them where they're supposed to be. So now comes the fun part, putting it back in. 
All right, folks. Here we go. We're going to put it back in. We'll see how this works. It's important to remember not to pinch those lines. So we will get those out of the way in just a second. Getting this vacuum hose in as well. next step will be up here so let me move you up here <clears throat> okay we're back under the back end of the car and the next thing we need to do is get all three of these lines out from on top of the tank so that's the vacuum line switch hands here and other two lines Let's put them down like that for now so we're not getting them stuck up underneath you can actually put them right here because well that's where they're gonna eventually go so that way we know we're not squishing them all right the last thing you want is them squished. Next is the electrical connections. Alright, so now we're going to plug it in. Make sure this cable is on top of the fuel net connection, otherwise you're going to have fun with that. Plug in the regulator first, or sensor first. We need to move the gas tank closer. Go right ahead. Certainly be easier if you do. I don't even know if you can see that at this point. And just get it in there. I don't know if you heard that, but it clicked. And then, same thing with the. Uh, you may have just missed it off camera, but. There it is in the fuel pump itself. It clicked. We're good to go. Alright, the next thing we need to do is get this fuel tank up high enough to get this um, fuel neck inside, which is going to require it to move back a little bit as we jack it up. So you want this as far back as you could possibly get it. until it won't jack up anymore and then see this is the thing I was talking about earlier you can even slide it forward so that it tilts a little bit the jack slide the jack forward so that it tilts a little bit you can get this pushes in just a little bit but you just need to get it started and you can jack up some more there we go see how it's going right in there all right and then you can move it forward as you're doing that Alright, and we already got this 
hose in over here. Let's see. So that is in. This hose is already back around again. And we'll just we'll connect that once we get it all in. So now you can should be able to just maneuver this back into position. And then we'll start working on the straps. So let me get you guys over here. And I'll get this up the rest of the way. Oh yeah, and before you do the strap, well, you know what? Don't try to get this filler neck on now. We'll do that after the straps are on and holding it up tight. Hey, okay, you want to get it up far enough so that go you don't want to start lifting the car up so we don't go too far with it because you will start lifting the car up off the ramps <laughs> all right there we go it is in position so now we're going to go on the back there and work on getting those straps back on okay so i've got the tank up as high as i can get it in the back i know you see that heat shield's bent that was an accident i'll fix that this is the toughest one because of the way it is designed so it's got to go in at an angle and of course with the tire and the jack in the way this can be a challenge but this is the one you want to do first and once you get this one in the other one's pretty easy as you can see this one because of the limited room can be kind of a challenge There we go. Very good. Now, the heat shield is a insert tab A into slot B, which is on here kind of deal. So you can do that to start with and then get a pair of pliers, which is what I'm fixing to do, and just pinch it off. Let me see if I can adjust you what I'm talking about. There we go. That's a little better. I use these to kind of start to pinch and then finish it with a regular one. This isn't going to be perfect, but it works if you're a welder. Well, I wouldn't recommend weld welding this because you need this to come apart to be more effective. There we go. Now, let's go around to the other side. Alright, we're back on the passenger side. This strap, as you can see, just goes in and hangs. It's really super easy. Just take the two sides. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's just, it's got an opening. So it's, it literally will just slide right in. Boom, that's it. That's how hard it was. And then it's an insert tab A into slot B again which actually let me do it this way there we go that's a lot easier because that this side is so much easier and then I'll bend this heat shield back once I uh, put the strap back on but you see the the, the tank has indents for the uh, straps that's how you can kind of find that location there and then just pull it in and get, it, get that tab in all right, gentlemen, it suddenly occurred to me that before I do all the strap, uh, attach the straps and everything else, let's test the pump. It's connected to the electrical. I've got a pan underneath the uh, ends. I'm going to cycle the key a few times, kick on the, the thing, uh, the fuel pump, and let's see if it even pumps fuel out. Because if we're not, then I might as well just put the old one back in, the, the OG, because... At least it intermittently works. But let me show you what I got. I got the battery connected to a charger because it's been off, not running for a little while. So let me set you up here and then we'll get you, we'll get you, we'll see if this thing even works. All right, you're set up on the pan. Y'all let me know if it works.
heard it. Success. You guys have no idea how happy I am about that. All right, let's put this thing back together. All right, since we're already here, let's connect these connectors. So, I can get you oriented the right way. I guess I'm not gonna be able to, so I gotta hold your hand. So, we'll do, this is the thin one. So we'll do this one first, especially since it's the one that's leaking moment so there you go you just hear it click boom it's in all right so this is a vacuum line connect this one real quick not the vacuum line yes uh vent line not vacuum line see that that just clicks in and then there's a little hanger specifically just for this and we will just hang it Right here, there we go. It just clips in, and then the last but not least is this line right here. Sometimes it can be a pain to get it all the way in. Not sure why it likes to do that, but it does. Come on, it's so close. You guys have no idea. There it goes. Okay, perfect. And now, let me turn you just a little bit. There's a little clamp right here that all the lines go in. I normally wouldn't do it that way. This way, I'd wait till the tank was all strapped up, but because it was leaking like that. I didn't want to let it continue leaking like that, so I just went ahead and connected them all. Alright, I'll try to connect that later. Alright, let's go finish strapping this sucker up. Alrighty, folks. There, sorry, you gotta be crooked a little bit, but that's the best I can do to get you to see what, what we're doing here. All right, so we just gotta get our strap up. It's, uh, I'm having trouble because the backside of the tank has dropped down enough that it's interfering with the strap. So uh, just so you know, that could happen. And you just gotta kind of force your way up. That's it. favor adjust the tank around there we go see how it's going up now okay sometimes it just requires a little moving around of things all right well, you know how to put screws in um, unfortunately I you are once again where I need to be uh, to get this going so gotta move you all right got it started the rest of the way my hand. there we go just a little bit of turn there and your straps in there you go now on to the other side all right time for strap number two there we go I got the bolt where's my ratchet of course I left it on the other side of the car this is the uh, driver's side by the way the other side was the passenger side all right I got my ratchet I got the bolts hopefully you guys are not in my way this time you actually have to bend the strap to get past the lower control arm back here it will go up in there and then you might have to bend it back out I apologize you're just looking at my glove at the moment I'm trying to move out of the way here 
And maybe I can do it with this hand. So you can see what I'm doing here. Alright, and I'm just gonna start it by hand. As you shoot, anytime that's possible. But then you can kind of fasten her. Funny, y'all do this because I can't get it from that angle and, and get any torque on it. But you all know how to start a screw, right? Or a fastener in this case. Just get it enough so the enough threads are on there. And it has caught and it hasn't cross threaded because that would be a pain to try to get all that figured out. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Uh, it's worth taking the extra few seconds to do it by hand. All right, I got a double fit. I got a reach around here. No, don't you come off. That would be all I need. There we go. All right. There we go. I'm just going to tighten it by hand. That's it. Now you can remove the jack. You should have left the jack under there the whole this whole time as a safety feature. But now you can, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, folks. Off camera, I reattached the fuel deck to the uh, fuel tank. Uh, the one thing I would suggest maybe is waiting to connect that. Uh, just make sure it doesn't get pinched. Mine got pinched and I had to loosen it up with a... Uh, not loosen it up. I didn't loosen the straps. I pushed it up with a... What do you call those? A oh, screwdriver. That's it. So just be aware of that. So now we're going to reconnect this vent hose here. Uh, my light's dying. I don't know if I've got enough foam in my light, but we'll, we'll try here. So we're just pushing this back in. Now if you want, you can put some silicone paste around here. And that will lube it up enough for it to guard in. There still should be something left on there from the last time I did this. And there is, and it goes all the way to a little collar. And then all you need to do is get your pliers and we uh, put the uh, clamp back down on where it was. That way you don't ruin the, the hose. So you squeeze that sucker and move it down, which is always a challenge from this angle. <laughs> Witness marks is what I'm trying to get at. The marks from the hose from the original location. They call witness marks and you want to try to line them back up again. There we go. Alright. That's in there. Now, don't forget. Again, let's see if I can do this one-handed. This bit hose has got to go back in this clamp here. Which we should do before you reconnect put the screw back in. There we go. Now we just got to put that screw back in. Again, start it by hand. You see I've switched back to my trademark yellow gloves. They're not actually trademarks. You all can find them yourself at Home Depot. I think it was not a sponsor. And then uh, that's again, it's a a 10 millimeter. We'll just There's the wrench cam. Again, just a little, a little bit of a turn. So now all we need to do is that should be everything. So let's go through and recap. We reconnected that. We put that bolt in. Straps are back on both sides. 
The cooler neck it is reattached. Right in there, but it is. It's not, you're just gonna have to trust me. All the lines are connected to the fuel line, and we just need to see if you know what that won't clamp. But you know what, they're not going anywhere. Everything's reconnected, so let's go see if we can get this thing started. All right, this is where we find out whether it worked or not. First thing you need to do, and this is why I have it hooked up to the battery thing, because it's like I said, the battery's been off for, for about a week. Plus, we're could be we're going to be cycling the key a few times, so starter or the fuel pump needs enough voltage to get started so just just precaution so we're going to cycle it listen we want to listen for the uh, fuel pump to kick on which we already know it did because it pumped fuel into there we're going to do that two or three times because the fuel needs to get through the filter all the way up into the uh, fuel rail so hear the fuel pump I hear the relay cl clicking on and off this car has got something going on with it where the uh, tack needle bounces up and down really quick gotta wait for it to stop doing that sounds strong the gas gauge is working it's showing it's got a little less than half a tank which is accurate one more time Alright, let's see if we have enough pressure built up. Woo! You have no idea how good it is to hear that. It's going to be nice to drive this off the ramps instead of pushing it off the ramps. That's fantastic. That thing's charging right up. Come on now. It's, there's just air still in the fuel system. That's why it's doing that. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to drive it off the ramp and park it and let it run for about 15 minutes and we should be good to go. fuel pump hopefully everything's been fixed now now there's some odds and ends with this car that I still need to do but we'll see those in future videos hopefully of my continuing Saturn saga but help me help me out and give me that thumbs up subscribe tell your friends about it and I'm sure at some point we'll come across something else that we need to fix with this car but I hope you have a good one and we'll see you next time on the DIY Dan channel